Okay, so I think that we are ready to go. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for being here today. Welcome to YSN and welcome to YSN Academy. My name is Carolina Navarro. I'm head of YSN Academy. And for those who haven't heard about YSN in Academy, I will do a quick introduction about it. So YSN is a software development and design services company with operations in US, Mexico, Vietnam, Thailand, Australia, and Spain. We have more than six years of experience and more than 1,000 employees around the globe. We start as a product company and gradually we migrated to the services area. We realized that we could help other high growth companies to build better products faster through our different disciplines, such as technical writing, UX design, engineering. So Wizen is trusted uh, by brands such as National Geographic, Fox Networks, uh, the Washington Post. And part of our culture is how we uh, empower our employees and the community to innovate and grow their careers. And that is why uh, exists Wizen Academy. So Wizen Academy is a platform that offers free courses, uh, educational programs such as workshops, talks, certifications, panels in a technology such as AI, software development, UX design, technical writing. And as part of our commitment to those community, we love to host awesome people uh, who enjoy to contribute to the knowledge and, and to the industry. And today we are very happy to host awesome guests from Wiseline and, and, and one awesome guest from Google. So let's get it started. And Armando, the, the stage is all yours. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you so much, uh, Carolina. And uh, hello to everyone. And welcome to today's webinar, Docs as Code, Write for Developers as a Developer. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. It's so great to have such a big audience for today's session. And uh, today we are talking about a really interesting topic, uh, which is docs as code. And uh, th this is a term that has been buzzing around the, the IT community and the technical communication field for for the last couple of years. And you might have heard of it, uh, heard of it before. And uh, I'm very happy to be your host today. Uh, my name is Armando Salazar, and um, I'm a technical writer at Wiseline. I specialize in documenting software for enterprises and for startups in the IT industry. And I've been using Docs Code in my projects for several clients to help um, people from different backgrounds, from uh, UX design, from web development, and uh, finally to end users to design and deliver uh, useful documentation. And um, most recently, I helped one of the fastest growing delivery service applications here in Latin America to implement a solution using uh, Docs as code for their API documentation. And uh, this solution helps their users uh, to integrate with their application and to finally well, start their business. And um, well, personally, I, I am a firm believer that Great companies uh, do require excellent documentation. And well, it is very nice to meet you. And this session will be full of useful information for, for you to start working with Docs as Code in your projects in no time. So um, today's session is divided into two 30 minute halves. Um, for, the her for the first half, we'll go over um, the first four topics. And We'll start off by defining what is Docs as Code with a general overview of this practice and uh, why should you start using Docs as Code in your projects? Uh, what are some of the challenges that you might encounter when implementing these practices and ultimately how to solve them? And also, we're going to see how, you, uh, how we can transition uh, from traditional documentation to a Docs as Code approach. And finally, for the second half of the session, we'll have a QA discussion, a Q and A discussion with a set of experts from Wiseline. And as Carolina mentioned, we have two very special guests, and one of them um, comes from Google. And before we begin, I would like to share with you some important notes. If you have any questions during the session, 
uh, please uh, make sure to enter them on the chat and one of our panelists will answer them on the Q&A section of this webinar. And uh, please try to focus your questions on the presented topics. And well, without further ado, thanks again for being here and let's get into it. So we'll start off by defining what exactly is DOCSIS code. So we define this practice as the philosophy of writing documentation using the same tools that developers use to code. Well, the idea behind uh, DOCSIS code is to make most of the proven engineering technologies and all the processes that we use for developing software and implement that into creating content and delivering up-to-date information to, to our users. And when we think about documentation, we normally, uh, we normally think about this set of guides in form of uh, PDFs or in similar formats about how to use a, a particular application, right? And that is what we call uh, traditional documentation. Now, this type of documentation, traditional documentation, um, comes with a set of challenges. And these challenges have been more noticeable as technology has evolved in the, in the last years. Now, to mention some of the problems um, with this type of documentation is the first one that your documentation becomes static when we publish it. And, um, we normally get single authoring in the creation of these documents. And there also, it can be a formatting uh, variance in the content of your documentation. Now with traditional documentation also, it becomes really difficult to track all the changes that we do uh, to, the, to the documents. And ultimately there is absolutely no control of the existing versions that are published, right? So uh, having this in mind and uh, considering that applications are in constant, in constant movement and they're being constantly updated, this type of documentation becomes obsolete very quickly. So DOCSIS code is, it is not only a set of tools, but it's an agile mind, mindset for creating documents. And, uh, with this, with this, we like to treat our documentation as a fundamental part of the software. So when we talk about these tools and processes, we refer to the following. We use trackers uh, to have visibility and control of our documentation requirements. And for this, we can think of using JIRA for creating our documentation tasks. And you also use Git tools for updating and for collaboration purposes. We write our documentation using plain text markup for uh, content reusability. Now, the um, final objective of having uh, of writing our documentation with this format as Markdown or restructured text or acid doc is to have the source files of our documentation. Now, uh, we also emulate uh, code review processes to ensure accuracy and quality in, in our documents. And finally, we run automated, uh, automated tests to identify possible errors in the content before publishing. So uh, talking about the documentation itself and, and DOCSIS code, how, how does it look like? And uh, here we have an example of an open source products documentation site. And um, this is rendered using the document source files for the content, which is uh, the part uh, in the middle of the page. And uh, this is a, an interactive site and uh, for technical and for non-technical users that was put together using uh, HTML, CSS, and uh, JavaScript. So we get this very friendly, uh, very user-friendly documentation site with living document. And to illustrate how, uh, how this DOCSIS code process uh, looks like, uh, here's a diagram of uh, the complete architecture flow. Now, as you can see on the left side, we have our technical writer, right? 
this is the person that is in charge of creating the content for the software. And regarding the content creation, which is the middle part of, um, of the diagram, the technical writer uses, uh, as I said, a plain text editor to create and to edit the source files uh, with Markdown or a similar language. Now, working with this plain text editor allows a technical writer to use validators in the form of linters uh, for content analysis. And uh, this enables the writer to implement their own QA uh, conditions during the creation of the document. Now, the technical writer uses version control tools for collaboration purposes and takes advantage of code reviews to ensure accuracy in their documents with peers and uh, with subject matter experts to ulti uh, that are ultimately the final audience of the document. So we get this accuracy in the content. Now, why should you be using Docs as code in, in your projects? Now, what exactly are the benefits? Well, implementing Docs as code, um, impacts directly in some of your business's uh, core aspects. And first, it helps you to centralize all the, all the information that you distribute. It improves the collaboration in your teams. It helps you to adapt the tools that you use for development, and it helps you to reduce costs significantly. Now, in the following slides, uh, we'll go into detail about each of these aspects. Well, talking about centralizing your content, uh, Docs Code enables you to have um, a single source of truth uh, for your documents. And this happens by, hap uh, by having the source files of your content. And with these source files, you're able to store them in a repository for uh, further use, for further deployment, if you want to. And Using the Git tools also allows you to have uh, multiple owners for uh, the different documents that your product needs, right? So let's say that we have a technical writer that is working with a UX designer and uh, they're working on a user experience style guide and the same technical writer is working at the same time with a web, develop, uh, web developer and they're working on a deployment strategy and for your cloud services, right? So we finally get what we like to call one single final product. And having this single final product, uh, we avoid the risks of having multiple versions of the same file in different formats, which with traditional, with traditional documentation, uh, it happens a lot that we get, we have these PDFs or these Microsoft Word files uh, distributed among our customers, and we're distributing actually this outdated materials to our users. And in terms of uh, collaboration, we emulate the same procedures that we use when developing an application. So using version control and Git, uh, and when the Git flow allows us to co-create documents with uh, different team members and to keep track of every changes, which enables us to always have the latest information about our product. Now, this also helps us to deliver accuracy and quality in our documents and allows us to constantly improve the content. So for example, in WiseLine, we use these practices for reviews with uh, with other technical writers from the team and uh, or directly with subject with subject matter experts to deliver the most accurate documents so this also allows us to have constant improvements and keeping in mind that uh, the software is always updated we can always improve in our content of our documentation now a crucial thing that uh, it's important to remember, and this is actually one of the foundations of Docs as Code, is, as I said, uh, technology always changes, uh, which means that you must constantly improve your documents. Now, this Docs as Code approach allows you to use the full potential of your development tools to deploy your documentation, whether 
if it's on a web platform or uh, if you're delivering the documentation in uh, through another source. Now, this allows you to have a uh, full customization opportunities for uh, your documents and to have third-party integrations with um, with other tools. So you can picture it as a, as a blank canvas, right? So you have your documentation and you get this endless possibilities at front end level for your platform, for your delivery platform. And you get this possibility to integrate different applications to deliver your products uh, documentation. And well, the Docsys code practice is based on maximizing efficiency with uh, familiar development tools. And this basically means that most of the tools that we use in Docsys code are already being used by existing developers. And we can think about Atlassian software, right? Like we can get uh, like big bucket or we get uh, free to use applications or low cost services or in any case, uh, tier based subscription, uh, subscription software such as GitHub. And you can also uh, use this free to use static site generators to distribute the Docsys code documentation. And this type of sites require minimum configuration and uh, minimum installing prerequisites to render your content. And having all these tools allows you to have this feature rich documentation site with uh, searchable features. For example, we have a, an API documentation site here. And on the left side, we have this uh, search functionality, this search functionality, and in the middle, the actual content of the documentation. On the right side, we have a third panel view that gives you a sample of an API request and a sample of an API uh, and an API uh, answer. And with, with this type of, uh, of tools, we get this up-to-date information always delivered to our customers, basically for free or for a low cost. Now, uh, about transitioning from traditional documentation, how do we transition from a, tra a traditional documentation model to a Docsys code approach? Well, whenever we implement these uh, new technologies, uh, some new challenges may arise. And um, the difficulty of these challenges are obviously might vary uh, depending on, on your team's experience. And well, implementing Docsys code, uh, first, it does require um, some prior knowledge of the tools uh, that we mentioned earlier and the procedures involved in, in product development. And it also requires this entry to mid-level technical understanding of development practices. So we also need to keep in mind that there are no particular user interfaces uh, to create our content, right? Like as we said, uh, we are working with the document source files and you have to define the actual tool that you're gonna use for this purpose. And last but not least, as this process is, is, well, it can be new for you, you can expect a slight delay in your publishing flow. So these challenges might sound a little bit overwhelming, but we prepared a series of tips uh, to help you overcome these challenges when tra transitioning from, from traditional documentation to Docsys Go. And to overcome these challenges, uh, first and foremost, you have to set the foundation. And um, that is, you have to build the Docsys code mentality in your teams uh, to achieve this collaborative effort. And uh, you have to share the value that Docsys code is actually bringing to you, uh, bringing to your team and ultimately bringing to, to your company. And how this uh, transition will enhance your actual process. Now, secondly, uh, you have to prepare your working platforms. And this means that you actually need to define the actual tools that and your processes that you are going to use 
during your implementation. For example, what flow what flow am I going to follow, right? Uh, which tools am I going to use for 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 my documentation? And third, we need to train uh, our teams in the technologies that we are going to choose, uh, that we're going to use. We have to onboard our team on how to use these tools and um, how the processes work. Uh, once we have this um, set of tools and processes defined. And last but not least, we need to define our pl our publishing platform for uh, the documentation. And this is how are you going to present the final documentation to the user? How the user is going to receive the documentation you prepared? Are you going to distribute it uh, using um, a web platform? You're going to, to deliver the documentation uh, using uh, another source? and defining how the user is going to actually uh, consume this, this documentation. So this was a general overview about the Doxus code approach and how everything works and the comparison between the normal way and uh, the traditional documentation and this uh, new approach and how can we update our documentation constantly and keeping, keeping it paired with um, the developing of our software. And we're gonna go to the Q&A discussion panel. And uh, for this uh, part of the webinar, we have a uh, very special guest. And I'm very thr uh, thrilled to present uh, our set of experts to you. First, we have uh, a great colleague of, a great colleague of, my, of me, and we have Joaquin Romo. Joaquin is a biomedical engineer, and he has a passion for technology and for writing, and he's a part of the technical writing team in Wiseline. Uh, Joaquin, how are you today? Hello, um, I'm doing great. Thank you for the introduction. I I'm glad to discuss some of, some of my strategies with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joaquin. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you here. And uh, besides Joaquin, we also have uh, my colleague, uh, Jose Luis Zapata. Uh, Jose Luis, you there? I'm here. Hello, Hello. Jose Luis. Uh, Jose Luis has been working on the, in the IT industry for a few years. And he has also worked in academia previously as a college professor. And uh, he has also worked as a, a researcher and as a tech uh, columnist in the marketing field. And uh, how are you today, Jose Luis? I'm doing great, really excited. And hopefully uh, the hype doesn't uh, fizz out because of my, <laughs> of my experience here, but uh, hopefully we can talk a lot about Doxus Code. Great, it's so great to have you here. And we also have uh, Ariel Sanchez with us. And Ariel comes from a background in English literature and uh, biological sciences. And he has been working a lot with software and API documentation for our clients. And Ariel, are you here with us? Yeah, hello. I'm very happy to be here and I'm excited about sharing my experiences with you. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, it's so great to have you here. And well, thank you guys for being here and um, for our special guest, we have an extraordinary set of uh, special guests joining us today. Uh, first, we have Roxana Loza. Uh, Roxana, how are you? Um, hi, everyone. I'm doing good. Uh, thanks for having me here today. How are you? I'm pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Roxana. So happy to, to have you here. And let me talk to you about uh, Roxana. Roxana, she is a technical writer at Google and she's a former member of WiseLine. Uh, she currently gives, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you give direct support to Google engineers with documentation and training material. Is that correct? Um, yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, it's mostly focused on internal documentation. So I mostly write docs for Google engineers. Okay, great. That sounds, sounds really good. And uh, thank you for being here, uh, Roxana. And last but not least, we have Liliana Badillo with us. How are you today, Liliana? Hi, Armando. I'm very excited to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being here. Uh, Lily, well, 
Lily, she's a mathematical genius. <laughs> she's a data scientist uh, and she has worked as an AI software engineer. And uh, she is a former technical writer uh, here at Wiseline as well. And uh, we'll thank you both for being here. And uh, we'll go to the, um, to the Q&A section. Now, uh, if we have, a, a, we're gonna answer some of the questions that you did on the, on the Q&A chat. And uh, first, um, if you do have uh, some, some questions about what we, what we saw in the first half, uh, please, you can enter them on the chat and we'll be very glad to answer them. Any questions about regarding the, the creation of the document uh, during uh, the documentation using Docs' code and what type of files do we, uh, do we use, what kind of formats uh, do we use to, to, for our documentation, how do we publish our final documentation, and uh, you can ask freely on the, on the Q&A uh, chat. And we have one question. Uh, it says, hi guys, is it possible for QA engineer to do a transition to this field? If it is, which would be the first steps to uh, don't fail in the attempt? Well, this is a really good question uh, because we have uh, an, a person coming from a QA uh, that is transitioning uh, to this field. And we have a, a really, really rich background of um, people coming from different areas. And uh, as, as you saw, Jose Luis comes from a marketing field and from academia, and Ariel Joaquin comes from a science background. And, uh, and uh, well, mm, I think Liliana, maybe you can help us answering this question uh, since you uh, come from a really, really different background. Sure. Well, I think anyone can just make a transition into technical writing. I mean, you just have to have, you know, an interest in, you know, IT, you know, in, in products and all of that. So I think if you're already in, you know, uh, as a QA engineer for you, it should be very easy. Just, you know, because you already uh, have the concepts and, you know, for example, how you create a product, you understand the needs of the product and the documentation, both, you know, from a user perspective and also from an engineer's perspective, you already know what are your needs when it comes to documentation and you know what are the information that you need to provide for, for other people to to interact with the with the product, uh, be it you know from the user perspective and also from the technical perspective as an engineer who's contributing to the project. So I believe that it is easier to make a, a transition. So you just need to have you know a lot for you know communication. You know you just have to uh, be passionate about writing and you know communicating technical uh, concepts to a very diverse audience. So I think that's all you need. You just need to have a, a passion and start writing and start, you know, exercising that part, you know, communicating and all of that. And I think that's all you need. And I should say it's very easy because for me, in my case, I come from a very different background. And, and for me, I just, you know, it, it just, it, it was all about, you know, uh, learning how to write, how to communicate, learning all the skills that a technical writer needs to, to, to uh, write about the product and, and for engineers. So I, I should say that it's, it's very easy. All you need to be is very passionate about communicating. Well, that was a great answer. Uh, thank you so much, Lily. And um, you're absolutely right. As uh, us, us coming from different backgrounds uh, gives us a um, broader, uh, perspective on, on on the document, right? Because we are the users and the consumers of the documents as well as uh, we become the, the writers and the actual creators of the content later on. So great, thank you. And uh, we have another, we have another question. Uh, in what part of the technical process is Jenkins uh, used? And uh, Maybe you can help us with this uh, question, uh, Jose Luis. Sure thing. Well, we got to remember that one of the main goals of, or well, one of the things we relate to, to Docs Code is uh, building or doc artifacts that is or actual documentation, something that's going to be visible for, for all the users and depending on the use case, well, uh, the different type of users that we're going to have. 
Um, in this case, when we are trying to automate the process of deploying the documentation, we have to build the documentation, test the documentation, and see that everything is working as expected. And uh, in this part is where we can use Jenkins or some other software or some other automation servers to or services to, to go through all this process. We can test, we can check, we can have a linter there. Uh, well, there's people asking about linters too. So we can have linters there to validate that we're writing correctly. In the case of technical writing, linters are used a bit differently. So we use them mostly, uh, you know, to check spelling, maybe to check that we have, we're using Markdown correctly. And throughout this, pro throughout this process of checking and this automated process, which is the goal uh, in Docs' code, is where we can use either Jenkins, Body, or GitHub Actions, or GitLab Actions, or some of the other services, automation services that we have around. So that's where, where we will see these kind of tools. Thank you so much, uh, Jose Luis. That's a great answer. And uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, technical writing and the Docs as Code approach allows us uh, to experiment with more tools and to deliver uh, the highest quality possible in our documents. And uh, and you actually answered another question about the linters and how we can implement certain, certain rules of our documentation, of our writing process into checking uh, the format and delivering the actual, the final documentation and saving up a lot of mistakes, right? Um, it, whether it's formatting mistakes or entering our personal um, conditions. So I think that pretty much answers that question. Thank you. And now we have another question. This is a really interesting question. It says, the industry has traditionally had non-technical people which is people uh, who can understand technology but don't actually write code uh, working in software documentation. Won't this transition reduce the turnaround time for a lot of writers effectively costing more? So we're, we're talking about having people that are not actually developers or that, are, that don't actually write code and uh, working with the documentation. Now, uh, Ariel, uh, do you think you can help us answering this really, really good question? Yeah, sure. As someone who comes from that non-technical background, I think I have something to say here. So I, I think that initially it might seem true that there is uh, there actually is a bit of time and effort that you have to um, that you have to devote to get familiar with this type of tools. And, and this type of technologies initially. But I think that in the long run, it doesn't end up costing more as, a, as the question is suggesting, uh, because one of the things that Docs Code uh, allows is, uh, as you just mentioned in your presentation, Armando, is the multiple ownership of documentation. When you're working with uh, Docs Code, you are also reducing less dependencies. And uh, you are reducing the number of, of dependencies. And, the developers can um, can contribute directly to the to the documentation. So you 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 are you stop becoming a blocker from the documentation from being updated because you are using the same tools that everyone is using. So what I would what I would answer here is that uh, yes, there is a bit of uh, of time investment that, uh, at the beginning, but in the long run, it doesn't cost more. It it is uh, it is cheaper and it is more efficient in terms of time. Exactly. Thank you so much for for your your point of view on that because it it actually becomes uh, and and you're absolutely correct. And uh, as we have this multiple ownership of the document, we have a lot of eyes uh, seeing the same the same documentation, and we we have the the responsibility of actually and and, and the the possibility of delivering the the most true documents and uh, regarding uh, a code or code approach and a technical approach and uh, on the writing uh, side. And I would like uh, Roxana, uh, if you can help us with uh, your point of view on this uh, particular topic. Um, sure, I, I had raised my hand because I, I just wanted to comment uh, following up um, what Ariel was saying. I think, um, you know, I used to have this idea initially, you know, that not having this 
um, technical background or not being familiar with all these concepts was going to be a huge, you know, time thing where you have to learn all these things to be able to write it. Uh, and I think my perception has changed a lot since then. I think there's a lot of value in bringing people that are not so familiar with the technical details because that allows um, that allows you to have like an open mind. And sometimes, you know, you ask these questions that may seem very basic to an engineer or somebody who's familiar with technical content, but that in reality, they're very good questions. And that are, are questions that users are gonna have when they read the docs. And I think one of the things that I've noticed is that as an engineer, when I sometimes write docs about a technical topic, I tend to, you know, take for granted that a lot of people will be familiar with these concepts and they'll know what we're talking about, which is something that happens with engineers, right? They speak at a very detailed um, level of the products or the technology they're building. When I think sometimes not being in tech can really be an advantage because you're really representing that user perspective that is not so familiar as engineers. So I think regardless, you know, when you join technical writing, it's a there is a learning curve to it. There's things you have to learn, you have to adapt to tools. So I think that goes into it, whether or not you're from a technical background, but I think having that fresh perspective is way more valuable when you're trying to produce user documentation than being, let's say, an expert on that topic. Thank you so much, uh, Roxana, for your, your comment on that. And yes, uh, we actually are the final users because we test all the technologies uh, to be able to write everything uh, that the software requires, the product requires. So, uh, and being um, related to that topic, uh, Joaquin, uh, there are people that are asking how does someone that comes from a non-technical background actually uh, gets into technical writing? This is probably not to, related to Doxus Code, but uh, Doxus Code, uh, like we said, re requires um, this type of entry to mid-level knowledge. How do you think, Joaquin, what, what, what have been your experience uh, coming from a biological science uh, background, right? Uh, how, how, do you, how do you think that, that this transition uh, goes? Thank you for 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 uh, giving me the opportunity to answer this question. Uh, I can speak from my experience. Uh, I started on a technical background, but on a different uh, path. I was uh, more focused on electronics engineering and medical devices, and that's how I discovered uh, uh, the technical documentation, but for um, electronics. Uh, I, I had to, to read a lot of documentation for my previous job and because I was enjoying so much the user experience of this technical documentation, all the details, all the completeness. Uh, I started to look into it and I decided to make a slowly transition into technical writing. So it, it doesn't matter if if you have a different technical background or a non-technical background at all, as long as you have the interest or mm, the passion for writing or for, as uh, Liliana mentioned earlier, to explain things to others, you can uh, mm, easier grasp all the technical aspects of how to structure the information uh, because at, at the end of the day, it's all a communication process, right? Uh, it's, it's a communication process in which you are delivering a message. Uh, the only thing is that the message, it's uh, with more complex information. So it needs to be carefully organized and structured. So it, it, it's not a, any difficulty to not being technical, as long as you are willing to learn and to understand how the technical people wants to be communicated. Okay, thank you so much. And I think that you mentioned something really important and uh, we're talking and uh, this webinar is about uh, writing for developers, right? Uh, as, as a developer working with Docs as Code. And uh, the, this next question actually relates a lot to what you just said. And um, this is, um, uh, have you had experiences of developers getting more involved or enthusiastic about documentation 
when the DOCSIS code approach is used. And this is really important because uh, we now we're talking uh, that we're using the same tools, right? We're, we're talking the same language here. And uh, I want, uh, Jose Luis, uh, what have you, um, what has been your experience uh, working? Because you have worked with a lot of uh, developers and people from technical background that um, are not really into writing, right? So uh, how was the, how has been this experience with, uh, to you? First of all, I want to give credit where credit is due, and I want to know that uh, I want people to know that uh, I learned the most uh, about uh, talking with to developers and being part of the team uh, from Roxana. <laughs> she was my team lead when I joined Wiseline, and I got a lot of good things from from her and a good a lot of good tips uh, regarding how to be part of the team. And one of the things I learned is that when you use the same tools as the as the as the developers something happens and it, this is something really interesting uh i think that one of the main reasons why we're using uh docs like code is also because we want to promote con uh, collaboration and when you are not a tourist in software development like someone who is outside of the whole process but you're inside the process and you're part of the process, you're using the same tools whenever, uh, for example, we're using uh, version control systems. So when you're, we're using Git, for example, uh, something that happens a lot is that uh, I can just ask a developer for a review and it will be way, way easier for them to uh, to answer right away because they'll I'll just uh, tag them in a pull request and it's easy. That that's what that's it. They can say, okay, yeah, this is correct. They can make comments in the same thing. So yeah, I, I mean, people you and I mean people usually are interested in using new technologies and developers. I, I mean, I, uh, I don't want to make a generalization, but usually developers are people who get excited about learning new stuff. And well, Docs code is new stuff, right? And this approach allows you to make people excited about what we're doing and make people understand why we're doing and why it is important. And yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of collaboration that was born because I was using the same tools and, and something that, that the developers found exciting too. I know that using exciting technology may not be like a main thing to do in Texas code, but it never hurts to get people excited about what you're doing, right? Correct, thank you so much, uh, Jose Luis. And uh, yeah, you're you're getting uh, the developers right into the, the, the content creation process. And to be honest, and uh, as a personal experience, and maybe we have experienced that uh, all of us, uh, well, developers are, don't really have the time to to document everything, and that that is when we uh, get there, and we use the same tools to deliver the same and to collaborate in the same documents, and while not, uh, well, basically following the same flow the, of the development. And Ariel, I think you want to comment something on this. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to add that I have as uh, I have experienced uh, that sort of phenomenon of a developer uh, getting excited about working with Docs code tools. In this case, um, we we were we had already implemented the the Docs code approach, but not all of the members of the team uh, outside from the technical writers were onboarded on 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 this part of the process. So this developer wanted to to be part of the uh, of our Docs code approach to to in order so that they were able to update documentation uh, in in a more easier and efficient way. What was uh, important for, the, for this particular developer in, 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 in this case was that using the Docs code approach was very familiar to the work that he was already performing as, as a developer. So he, he didn't have to, to learn new tools, new, new technologies. This, was all, this is something that he, he was already familiar with. So once we onboarded him, it was very easier and, and very smooth, the, the transition and the, and the communication. Correct, thank you. And that's absolutely true. And uh, when you collaborate this way, uh, it's amazing because you get to focus on the actual content and that's it. 
And uh, you get these uh, people, these uh, SMEs that are involved, these uh, developers or, or whatever uh, person that's uh, involved in the document that to actually focus on the content and deliver the and, and deliver the most accurate um, information. Now we do have a, a lot of really good questions and uh, there is uh, there's this question. It says, how do you guys deal or coordinate with the really big project with lots of changes coming from different uh, people and different teams? In my current experience, technical documents uh, seems like they're doomed to be outdated all the time. So this is really good because this is the main focus of the Doxus Code approach. And uh, for this, uh, maybe Roxana can give us uh, tell us about her experience uh, working with really, really big projects and using this approach. Uh, yeah, sure, sure thing. I think you know it's an interesting question because um, also I was thinking about this based on. Um, what Zapata was mentioning. Um, because I think one of the things that I noticed at Google is that engineers write a lot of documentation. <laughs> they write a lot, a lot of documentation, which is a good thing, right? And it's a great thing. And part of it is because of what we talked in this, um, it, you know, having docs be in the same place as the code for their products and for all, so all of Google internal documentation sits in the same place as the code the same process for submitting a doc, reviewing a doc, approving a doc is the same flow uh, engineers go through to submit a feature. So I think that, you know, makes it really easy for them to contribute. Now, obviously, when you're talking about huge, you know, projects and um, projects that change so often and that have so many stakeholders, like, you know, initially, if you don't have a plan, like you, you kind of, you know, collapse and cry and sit for a while. But I think one of the things that, you know, we've done at Google to solve this problem, especially when you have so many people consuming and contributing to documentation, um, to avoid it getting stale, we have this kind of freshness system in place where, you know, if you write a document, then you're the owner for it. And we have this way of continuously generating tickets to ask the person, hey, is this documentation still up to date? Um, you know, can you check? And sometimes it's as easy as taking a look and say, yeah, nothing has changed here. Um, but that obviously takes a while, you know, to, to get into that place and have that system that allows you to seamlessly have collaboration. I think when, when you don't have those systems in place, um, I think as a tech writer, one of the best things you can do for yourself and for the project is having this, you know, quick process in place of how documentation is gonna, how uh, changes are gonna be made to documentation, right? So if there's a change, just saying, hey, this is the preferred way we're doing changes. And, you know, that obviously has to be tied to whatever tools and whatever um, tools you're using in the project, you know, if it's, you know, PDFs or if you're using Markdown or if you're using HTML and that gets published on a site. But even having that, you know, just initial, conversation with your stakeholders and with your customers and with the clients to say, you know, this is how we think, um, this is how we plan to do documentation. And this is the way we expect changes to come in. Um, because it can sometimes be for engineers, a little bit intimidating working with a tech writer if they've never worked with one before. So I think setting those expectations and what's the easiest way, you know, for the team to collaborate and to maintain documentation. Um, I think it's one of the best strategies you can do just have that initial conversation and ideally if you're able to find ways where you can um, have documentation be part of the process part of the you know of the project of the release cycle that makes it way more easy like easier for everyone because everyone's in the same page um, in terms of updating docs thank you so much Roxana and you actually uh you mentioned something really important, which is uh, involving or making the documentation uh, a part of the the actual uh, development. And uh, during the first uh, half of the session, we actually uh, saw uh, that we can use issue trackers uh, for our documentation purposes. And if we have the, the development of our software and we're creating tickets using Jira, for example, and, or Trello or whatever, we can actually create the same uh, tasks for uh, our documents. And so we can ensure to deliver the, not only to create a new document, right, but to update everything and uh, in a living 
uh, way and our documentation. And Joaquin, I think you you can give us a little bit more of uh, a little bit more context on this uh, iteration of the documents. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to add not specifically on the iteration, but on working with big projects. I had the experience of uh, working with a project that it was not huge as a Google project probably, but it was distributed into many teams that were focused on very specific uh, technical parts of, of the company each. And uh, it was hard to follow with all of them at the same time, or maybe uh, I, I couldn't keep uh, doing all of the work for them. But uh, remember that we are not only uh, writers of, of the documentation that, that, that they are working with, but we can also be facilitators. So in that case, uh, how I solved the situation was uh, creating templates for them. I helped them uh, creating templates uh, that then we implemented into each of these repositories. And by creating a template, the engineers don't feel overwhelmed on how to start because um, that may be the difficult step for them, how to start documenting. But we can, uh, with, a, with our writing knowledge, we, we do some uh, pre-formatted pre templates for each of, of their specific needs, even from a more detailed readme to a configuration uh, or deployment template. And then um, because these are hosted on the same place as their code, for example, in a Git repository, they feel more, uh, uh, comfortable collaborating to this documentation and then we can go back and do like the final step in reviewing their collaborations and do the fine tuning to the documentation so it's a it's all a teamwork and um, and we 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 need to remember that we are always facilitators and enablers so as long as we are unblocking uh situations for example, the confidence to start documenting, uh, we are helping uh, huge projects also. Exactly, thank you. And you actually answered some of the other questions that are on the Q&A section. And uh, there are a lot of questions regarding how do we document and uh, what tools do we use? If we use Markdown, we use PDFs or or, or any other uh, files. And uh, as, as, as you mentioned, and uh, a lot of us has uh, have actually talked about is um, trying to um, maximize uh, our time and our, our yeah, basically our, our, the way we deliver the documentation by uh, using the source files of the documents and which can help us um, uh, take take advantage or, or, or maximize this these other practices like code reviews and uh, and 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 this uh, practices of using git. Uh, to our to deliver our documentation and uh, there are a lot of uh, there are some really good comments and uh, uh, some of you said that there are really good text editors on uh, about, used on development like Visual Studio Code, Sublime, Atom, and uh, and Maribel is actually helping us answering some of the questions and comments on the on the chat and the Q and A uh, section and now I want to ask something else to Lily and um, the next question is what are the problems that you have faced at the moment of implementing Docs's code right because we're talking that it's uh, everything um, that it, it seems like really easy but what are the problems that you have faced uh, while implementing this and how did you fix it well there are many uh, challenges that I've encountered first for the first time implementing it how to select like the right tools for for uh, following this approach and also how to explain to other people not only to developers but from other non-technical people who's also part of, of collaborating with the project for example project managers and all of that to explain them why it appears that we're actually taking too many extra steps to produce documentation so it's just like you know explaining that this is this is a benefit that we will get at some point, but that you need to take and, and invest a lot of time 
into you know implementing the process uh, like for example like Roxana mentioned you need to devise a process on how you're going to review how you're going to update the documentation so you need to spend some time right at the beginning explaining you know and, and also a bit of you know teaching and, and and explaining to people why this is going to pay in the in the long term so for me that was like the biggest challenge that I encountered how to you know explaining why we're taking extra steps and extra time just to implement all of this, and and, and also convincing people that I mean even I mean that even though you're using the same tools and the same processes, you still need to you know uh, look at the human aspect of this, which is you know um, and, and what I'm trying to say is just you know that reviewing documentation, like getting feedback and all of that is something that we all need to be involved and we need to, to be part of it and we need to be constantly updating our documentation and also uh, considering, the, uh, considering our audience. So that's also a, a, a challenge that I encountered, you know, like not, also, not only looking at, at tools and, 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 you know, processes and all of that, but also involving people and, and, and including people in, in the whole process. Great. Thank you so much, Liliana, for your perspective on that. And I think we have uh, just time for one last question. And this is a really good question. Uh, do you start documenting on a software as Markdown and then the review and inputs from the developers are given via GitHub? And how often do you send the document for review before it is ready? How long may it take to have a document ready for the client? So we're talking about uh, cost reduction and efficiency. And I think uh, Zapata, Jose Luis, can you give us uh, your output on this? And how, how are we actually reducing the cost? Because we're actually making a lot uh, the process bigger, right? Yeah, well, uh, we're talking about cost, specifically talking about cost, uh, which was another question I saw on the Q&A section. Uh, we can say that some of these services that host your documentation, they may cost anything between $100 to $500 a month. And when you are uh, hosting your own documentation using a docs as code approach, uh, this will cost as little as $10 a month, and it will depend on, on, on the average traffic that your, your documentation has. And specifically talking about how we start documenting, this process may vary and will be different, and I would love to hear how Roxana does it right now. But um, uh, in my case, uh, we start documenting on Markdown. I, and the thing is that, one of the main things that we want to accomplish in WiseLine is to have a, an agile approach to documentation. So that means that we, at least in my, in my case, I try to go on a user story oriented uh, workflow. That is, I, I, I have a user stories for different tasks that the, that the development team is working on to, so I can create that documentation for them and have it ready as soon as possible. So in this case, we're not talking about monolithic big documents, but instead of documents with small sections that we can update more frequently and that are easier to take care of. And that allows us to be well, agile, have a faster response uh, to any changes that we have and to create the documentation as we develop the, uh, the product. If you are in a project where there's already a big product, well, the approach changes a, uh, a bit because if there's no documentation, well, you had a, a big problem before, but yeah, now you're there, so you're, you're in charge of that. And um, the approach changes, uh, you have to set up your time, but I will suggest that if you're using a doc as code approach, you also use an agile approach for, the, for managing the documentation project as a whole. And this allows you to have like small chunks of work and makes, makes it easier for you to track changes, to track bugs in your documentation or uh, to update it if necessary. So yeah, I mean, this all helps. Uh, but, and one of the favorite quotes we have in technical writing is it depends. So it depends on the type of, of document. It depends on the type of project. It depends on, on, on the time that your SME or subject matter expert has. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of things that, that to take into account if, you, if we want to answer that specific question. Great, thank you so much, uh, Zapata. And uh, we're running out of time. And uh, I just want to share with you that 
if uh, there are some missing questions, and uh, you can actually contact us at the academy email, and um, we can answer them and we can talk about this uh, matter uh, further. And uh, well, I just want to thank you all for joining today's session and for the panelists to help us uh, discuss everything, all the questions that, that the attendees had. Uh, Roxana, Liliana, uh, thank you so much for, for being here. And thanks to all the attendees that are interested in these topics. And uh, so, yeah, if you if you have any more questions, you can contact us to the to the academy the uh, the academy email, and uh, and have a great uh, afternoon. Have a great rest of the rest of the day. Thank you.